Hello, welcome to Folk and Fairy Tales. I'm Miss Debbie from the Morton Grove Public Library and let's get started by saying hello. When I point to myself, I sing it. And when I point to you, it's your turn to echo back. When I go like this, let's sing all together. Ready? Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Now everybody, clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. Now everybody, clap your hands, come on and clap your hands. Again, hello. Hello, hello, and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. All right, so today's fairy tale is The Emperor's New Clothes. Sometimes you hear it as the King's New Clothes. So a king or an emperor is some kind of ruler. Here's a book um, that was illustrated in the 70s. It's really got bright, colorful pictures. It says here that this book or this story is by Hans Christian Andersen. And we're going to talk about that. He did write this version of the story, but actually he read a German translation of a story that originated 500 years ago in Spain, and it's a little bit different. All right, so I'm going to just show you some pictures out of this. All the versions start out with a king who was very vain. That means that he cared about things that were really not that important, like what he looked like and the clothes he wore, and not so much about things that were really important. And this picture shows all his many, many outfits. Well, two swindlers or thieves or tricksters came to town and they began to tell everybody that they could make the most beautiful suit of clothes that ever was. Well, when the king heard about it, he called them to his throne room and they told him about this wonderful suit of clothes. Now, in the old, old version, um, and this is part that Hans Christian Andersen changed. Um, they said that if you were um, a certain kind of person, you would be able to see the clothes. But if you were the kind of person that had something very shameful and embarrassing in your past, and I won't tell you what that is, but if that was true, then those clothes would be invisible. Now, in Hans Christian Andersen's uh, version, if you were wise and smart and fit for your office or your job, then you could see the clothes. If you were a fool and stupid and unfit for your office or job, then you wouldn't be able to see the clothes. So they began to weave all the thread onto looms to make the cloth. And then, and word got around about the suit of clothes and people would come to inspect, but of course they couldn't see anything. So they pretended like they could because they didn't want anybody to think that they were a fool and stupid or unfit for their job. And word got around to the whole town. And finally it came time for them to sew the clothes. 
And of course, they worked all night on nothing. All the while, they were fooling the king and the queen and the court and everybody in town because they were all too embarrassed to say that they could not see the clock. And when the day came for the big parade, they dressed up the emperor or the king. And as you can see in this picture, he has nothing on but his underwear. In the original version, when the king went out in the parade, all the noblemen, like the uh, dukes and earls and duchesses and uh, you know, countess and counts and, you know, all the nobility pretended like they could see it, but it was the common people that said there was nothing there. In Hans Christian Andersen's, when he was parading through the town, it actually was a small child. Let's see, here's a small child right there, or maybe it's this one right here. And they called out, look, he's not wearing anything at all. And so the parade ended with the emperor walking away, head held high, trying to hold on to his dignity. And hopefully after this, he was a much wiser man. In Anderson's tale, then, all the grown-ups lied, but it was a small child who told the truth. Now, I have a song story, partly told, partly sung, that is from the film Hans Christian Andersen, uh, with the words and music by Frank Laus, uh, Lauser, and it goes like this. This is the story of the king's new clothes. Now there was once a king who was absolutely insane about new clothes. And one day two swindlers came to sell him what they said was a magic suit of clothes. Now they held up this particular garment and they said, your majesty, this is a magic suit. Well, the truth of the matter is there was no suit there at all. But the swindlers were very smart, and they said, Your Majesty, to a wise man this is a beautiful raiment, but to a fool it is absolutely invisible. Naturally, the king, not wanting to appear a fool, said, Isn't it grand? Isn't it fine? Look at the cut, the style, the line. The suit of clothes is all together, but all together, it's all together the most remarkable suit of clothes that I have ever seen. These eyes of mine at once determine the sleeves are velvet, the cape is ermine, the hose are blue, and the doublet is a lovely shade of green. Somebody send for the queen. Well, they sent for the queen, and they quickly explained to her about the magic suit of clothes. And naturally, the queen, not wanting to appear a fool, said, Isn't it, oh, isn't it rich? Look at the charm in every stitch. The suit of clothes is all together, but all together, it's all together the most remarkable suit of clothes that I have ever seen. These eyes of mine at once determine the sleeves are velvet, the cape is ermine, the hose are blue, and the doublet is a lovely shade of green. Summon the court to convene. Well, the court convened, and you never saw in your life as many people as were in that court. All the ambassadors, the dukes, the earls, the counts, it was just packed with people. And they were all told about the magic suit of clothes. And after that, they, after they were told, they naturally did not want to appear a fool. And they said, isn't it, oh, isn't it, ah, isn't it, wee? The suit of clothes is all together, but all together, it's all together the most remarkable suit of clothes a tailor ever made. Now quickly, put it all together with gloves of leather and hat and feather. It's all together the thing to wear in Saturday's parade, leading the Royal Brigade. Hmm. Now, Saturday came and the streets were just lined with 
thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And they were all cheering as the artillery came by, the infantry marched by, and the cavalry galloped by. And everybody was cheering like mad, except one small boy. You see, he hadn't heard about the magic suit and didn't know what he was supposed to see. Well, as the king came by, the small boy looked and horrified said, Look at the king, look at the king, look at the king, the king, the king. The king is in the all together, but all together, the all together, he's all together as naked as the day that he was born. The king is in the all together, but all together to all together. It's all together the very least the king has ever worn. Summon the court physician, call an intermission. The majesty is wide open to ridicule and scorn. The king is in the all together, but all together, the all together, he's all together as naked as the day that he was born. And it's all together to chilly a morn. The end. So the king was all together from head to toe as naked as the day that he was born. Ready? Head, shoulders, knees, to toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and a mouth and a nose. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Faster. Here we go. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and a nose. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. All right. So there have been some adaptations of this. In the story I just told you by Hans Christian Andersen, there is a message or a moral, and that is to not let pride or fear keep you from speaking up. Another moral is that children speak the truth when nobody else will. Here's an adaptation called The Principles New Clothes. It's about a very vain principal. He was a good principal, but he uh, wore different clothes every day. And as a matter of fact, the children at the school would not miss a day of school because they wanted to see what the king was wearing. This adaptation is by Sim uh, Stephanie Kalmanson. And you can see what a snappy dresser he was. And at the end of this story, he goes before the school assembly again in nothing but his underwear. And who do you suppose told him the truth? You're right, a small child, a kindergarten student. And everybody threw him sweatpants and uh, a jacket and all that to cover up. Here's our little girl. She's the one that told him the truth. And here he is in his new outfit. Here is another one. Uh, the emperor's cool clothes. Now in this one, you have an emperor penguin. And if you can't see the clothes, that means you are not cool. Let's see if I can show you. Here's a picture of the emperor wearing his cool clothes. Look at that crown on his head. And this is certainly a modern uh, adaptation because the emperor pays the swindlers or tricksters with a credit card. See, he's got the credit card. 
and they go online and buy mountains of stuff. Look at that. They've been shopping online and they ended up with a whole bunch of stuff. Hard to make a getaway with that many packages. Of course, when the day came, he was in his birthday suit, which for an emperor penguin is actually quite nice. It looks like a little tuxedo. And there is this little bear here, and he tells the penguin that he has nothing on. Not only is he cool, he may be even be a little bit cold. The last version of this story is told from the emperor's point of view. The title is, For Real, I Paraded in My Underwear, the story of the emperor's new clothes as told by the emperor. Hmm, this one's going to be a little bit different. Here's the emperor. And he knows by now, you have heard the story several times. And it doesn't make the emperor um, sound very good. This is Emperor Twill. And he said, I did something totally embarrassing to save my kingdom. Would you please not stop snickering and let me tell you my side of the story? Well, in this version, he had a problem in his kingdom. His problem was that the people of Pardonia were too nice. And when something was not quite right, they wouldn't tell you the truth because they didn't want to hurt your feelings. So if you thought it was a good idea to have a chocolate fountain and it brought too many flies, nobody would tell you. If you want to take a cat to the water park, nobody would tell you. If you wanted to celebrate Tarantula Day, nobody would tell you that that was a bad idea. So he thought up this idea and instead of him being tricked, he hired two actors to pretend to make him a suit of clothes. So in this story, the emperor, the king knew all along what was going on. And he was just waiting for somebody to tell him the truth. Nobody did. Nobody would tell him the truth. He, he kept bringing all these people around and nobody would tell him until finally there he was the day of the parade. And he doesn't look too happy, does he? He's all dressed up in his underwear. Maybe, maybe somebody will tell him the truth. And guess what? Somebody finally does this little girl right here. Her name is Frankie. He found the one person in the entire kingdom who could help him turn things around because she told him the truth. So you see, the emperor says, I am not a fool. I was brave to do what I did. And now everyone in Pardonia can be a little braver too. So the moral of the story is, sometimes we need to be brave and speak up. And it's really not nice at all to allow people to make a fool of themselves. It's time to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed um, the Emperor's new clothes. Have a great day. Bye-bye.